Welcome to my synthesizer trash can. It's a synthesizer uh, targeted to very dirty and glitchy bass lines. So let's get started by looking at the schematics very quickly first. We have two synthesizers that go into a vocodex. Uh, the carrier also goes to two EQs that can do very glitchy stuff and send vowels and so on. After that, it goes to another EQ that's mainly for the ADSI envelope and also for some other glitchy things. After that, an uh, overdrive, chorus, maximus, convolver, and yeah, that's basically it. So let's see what it can do. First of all, the very simple stuff. We have an ADSR envelope. So basically we can like... Um, you also have to look at that the master volume is pre-effects, not post. So basically, for example, if we make the drive all the way up, uh, it gets more overdriven when we make the master volume louder. So basically here, it's not a lot of drive, but it gets more when we, when we crank the volume up. Yeah. Um, next are four very basic functions for the vocoder. The bandwidth may, basically makes the sound a little bit fatter or makes the details a bit more pronounced or more interesting, as you can hear. Unison, I think I don't have to explain that, makes unison. Uh, then a multiplayer basically um, emphasizes the details a little bit more or less. And also here's a form and shift. Yeah, you can hear what it does. In the effects section, we have a multiband compressor. Yeah, it's Maximus. <laughs> And uh, I think it's very good to mostly uh, pronounce the high frequencies a bit more and sound a bit fuller. Overdrive is already told me. Um, a reverb, um, which can go in two directions. The right direction is more like a bunker reverb. And also when you have it all the way up, then the dry signal also goes down. So this is only the reverb. The left is a brighter reverb. Also we have a chorus. Uh, those are also two different choruses. Yeah, so they sound slightly different. And I think uh, chorus and reverb are a pretty good combination to the other sounds, so I included them here. Next, we have a vowel section. Basically, what that does is we have this EQ here. Is it this one? Yeah, it's th this one. And we can change the parameters here a little bit. So basically, uh, we have an attenuator but that basically decides from where to where it goes. So the higher it is, the wider it goes from left to right. We can also make it negative, but since it's already down, it doesn't do anything. It only does something if we um, have a higher base. So the base is basically where it starts, where the default value is. And the attenuator let it swing around that value, basically. So yeah. Um, then we have depth, like, yeah, you see what it does, <laughs> very obvious. Uh, tension, which basically um, makes uh, makes it curved. So um, if, as I make this higher, um, then it becomes faster on the left, as you can see, or faster on the right. 
So it changes a little bit how it moves. Of course, we also have different LFO shapes. We have sine wave, uh, square, so yeah, we have everything. And the saw, as you can see, goes from down to up, but we can obviously change that by making the base higher and the attenuator low. So yeah, now we have a reverse saw, very easy. Um, also, we have obviously speed. <laughs> And width, so um, when we have it lower, then it's more like a thin sound. Yeah. Then we have a very interesting section, which is the self mod. It also belongs to the vowel section. So if we have, for example, the depth, all the way down, then this also does nothing because it's the same EQ. But what it can, for example, do is that it basically takes um, the sound from the carrier that goes into it and that changes uh, the frequency of this. So now nothing changes because the generator does nothing, but basically it vibrates very quickly and it gives it a very dirty sound. That's, I thought the effect was quite interesting, so good. But also make sure that, for example, if this attenuator is all the way up, then it's already at 100% when this is at 100%. <laughs> so this doesn't change anything, and at least not a lot anymore. So make sure that you have, if you want to use both, both that not both attenuators are all the way up. Okay, so next we have a filter section. It's also, also pretty intuitive. We have a low pass filter and a high pass filter and an ADS envelope that um, controls both of them. So, for example, oh, wait, no, the attenuator is up. Let's change that. Yeah, that's, that's, by the way, not the filter that this controls. It's this one. Yeah, very easy. Also, resonance. And the same for the low pass. And uh, we have this ADSI envelope that controls both of them. So, for example, if we want to have like, I don't know, let's uh, make like a plucky sound. So we have this one. And we have attack, make the decay a bit lower, sustain lower. Well, of course, we have to do that here as well because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. And now we have like a plug sound. Very simple. You probably already know that. Okay, besides that, let's change that back really quick. Um, we have a chaos function, which is basically you see what it does. Bring some chaos in the filter. And yeah, that's basically already everything. Uh, but I would also give some emphasis that uh, I hit some controls basically because it just wouldn't make sense uh, to, as you can see, I used Simpson for the um, for the synthesizers that feed the vocoder. But of course, you can use anything you want. You can use any other synth you have, and that gives some really interesting sounds. And also, I'd highly recommend to like change the settings in the two Simpsons uh, directly because just it wouldn't make sense to me to map all of the controls there if you can just change them here. So for example, you can change the wave from here. Some really interesting stuff. Area, this affects the sound even more. Uh, 
okay, that's maybe not the best sound. But yeah, you can do some really interesting changes here. And also, you can go into the vocoder and change a lot of settings that are very interesting. So mainly I'd give focus to, for example, the band distribution. distribution. Wait, are we? Yeah, okay. Um, so for example, if you have a lower band, a uh, band count, then it's more like a dirtier sound. And the higher it is, the more detailed it becomes. And also there's something called the uh, saturation, you know, the saturation curve. And for example, let's take the preset default. If we change that, we can also make the sound fatter or yeah, just make it different. It's a very interesting thing, but I couldn't automate it because it's like this XYZ draw thing, so I couldn't put it on the surface. But that's also a very interesting parameter to maybe look at. So yeah, there's a free download link in the description. Also make sure to... And let me know in the comments how bad my German accent is on a scale from 1 to 10. Until next time.